Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the respiratory pathology. The lecture is pneumonia and that within that community acquired atypical pneumonia. We have already done typical pneumonia. So, this is atypical. First of all, let us see what is the presentation of the patient that comes to you with the community acquired this pneumonia. Normally, the patients would not even know. We will talk about the pathogenesis usually the inflammation is in the parenchyma or the alveolar septa. So, normally exudate is not present, respiratory distress is not present, dyspnea is not present. So, the patient has some dry cough and some chest discomfort and that is it. Little more will be that patient has upper respiratory tract common cold symptoms. And so, that would be runny nose, you know, discomfort at the throat, some itching here in the trachea and so on, but mostly upper respiratory tract infections. There may be slight fever as you continue moving forward. There may be some chills, slight fever, some headache, some malaise-ness that may be there as well. But in some patients, in especially in the immunocompromised patient, this may be a fulminant disease, this may be a rapidly progressive fatal disease, can become fatal. And in such patients, what is strange for you as a doctor will be that the respiratory distress and the dyspnea is going to be very, uh, will be disproportionate, will be more than you expect because you look, you hear the chest and it is clear. You look at the chest x-ray and there is not much you can see there you see the sputum and there is not much sputum there and still the patient has a lots of dyspnea and distress. And if that patient is not properly managed, it is possible that the patient would die. So, with this kind of a presentation, let us see what atypical pneumonia is. First of all, the pathogens that cause it, there are primarily it is usually um, viral and then there are bacteria that are that are involved as well. However, please keep in mind that when there is viral upper respiratory tract infection, common cold, then there is a secondary bacterial infection that is possible in the lungs causing bacterial pneumonia as well. This is why the community acquired pneumonias are actually classified into two groups, community acquired bacterial or typical pneumonias and community acquired non-typical and non-bacterial because primarily the pathogens are viruses. Although as you can see here, Mycoplasma, Coxiali, Burnetti and Chlamydophila pneumoniae are bacteria or tiny bacteria that are also involved in this. Now remember this, Mycoplasma and the Chlamydophila Chlamydophila pneumoniae are both treatable causes of atypical pathogens or atypical pneumonia. This is why if you have a patient who you suspect has atypical pneumonia and you have to quickly take care of the patient, patient is going in distress, then you at least start with macrolides because macrolides would treat both of these treatable causes of atypical pneumonia. If there is anything else, these are viruses, you can't really do much about that, although nowadays you can give antivirals as well. So, on the viral side, which is more prevalent, influenza, common flu, type A, B and C and mostly type A, rhinovirus, coronavirus, rubella, adenovirus and varicella. Now, atypical pneumonia is usually the pneumonia of the children and young adults mostly it affects the patients who are lesser than 40 years of age and most of the time in the community setting for example schools prisons shelters and such other places now what happens what is the difference of the atypical pneumonia compared to typical guys thank you very much for watching this video make sure that you like and subscribe and if possible share it with your friends as well